What's up, bud? It's Rob. This is Apparel Success, and in this video right now, what I want to talk to you about is your clothing brand idea. We're going to cover whether or not your brand idea is any good. I'm going to talk about what it even means to have a good idea from the beginning, because you should constantly be changing and evolving your idea as your clothing brand grows. And we're just going to talk about your brand idea. So this should be a really good one. Here it is. This video here is sponsored by my buds over at Design Crowd. And if you need designs made for your clothing brand, I highly recommend that you check out Design Crowd. Design Crowd is a website that helps entrepreneurs crowdsource amazing designs from designers located all around the world. And for a special $100 VIP offer for apparel success viewers only, head over to www.designcrowd.com forward slash apparel to learn more, or simply use the discount code apparel when you post a project on Design Crowd. So I think that one of the biggest misconceptions that new clothing brand owners have when they're first starting out their business is that they think that their idea is everything, okay? This is one of the biggest issues of most newbie entrepreneurs who are coming into the game and they want to actually build a successful business is they think that the idea is everything and that when you have that perfect idea, everything will just work out for you and you will become successful. What they don't realize is that 99% of successful businesses out there actually started out with a pretty mediocre idea and then the entrepreneur themselves chipped and chiseled away at that idea until it became very polished and they were offering the world very real value. Honestly, for my own clothing brand, K-Bud Apparel, when we first came up with that idea, it was a pretty bad idea to begin with, okay? It was pretty mediocre. It was just like, hey, this is a saying that Canadians say, let's throw it on some clothing and see what happens. We hadn't flushed out the idea like crazy and we didn't understand what the brand was all about. And you know what? That's actually how most successful clothing brands start out. There's no way that you can create a clothing brand from the beginning where you understand every single little aspect of the brand to begin with when you're first starting and you launch and everything is perfectly chiseled and perfectly polished. You learn about yourself, you learn about the brand as it grows, specifically with clothing brands because you learn from your customers, you learn what they want, you understand that there are different designs that they respond to, so you start coming out with more designs that look like those and you get rid of the ones that don't work. You start to polish the actual copy that you're writing on your website and copy is basically just like the words that you're writing in your content on your social media and on your About Us page. And you start to chisel it and become more polished as a clothing brand. And there's just no way that you can do that from the very beginning with a perfect idea. That being said, there are definitely ideas that I've seen that I've worked with other clothing brand owners that I know from the very beginning aren't setting themselves up in the right direction to actually get success. And one of those things is if your brand concept is just way too generic. What I see all the time is brand ideas that are just way too generic to really have enough punch to actually resonate with people, to stand out amongst the crowd, and to build a real loyal cult-like following for your clothing brand, okay? It can be really difficult to do that if your brand idea is just sort of really general and doesn't have enough substance to it. So an example of something like this could be a clothing brand that's all about, you know, success. I'm creating my clothing brand and we're just going to go after people who want to be successful. Stuff like that can be way too generic if you don't actually focus in a little bit more and think about how you can be different and attack that market from a completely different angle that hasn't been done before. Honestly, probably one of the most important aspects of having a really solid brand idea is just doing something ridiculous, doing something really different that actually sort of shocks the market a bit and stands out amongst the crowd. One of the reasons why k Apparel does so well is because it's really different. Who the hell has a clothing brand named K-Bud Apparel, right? When you read it, it sort of shocks your brain a bit and you're going, what the hell am I looking at? I don't understand what this is. I want to learn more. Whereas if we just had a clothing brand that said, you know, beautiful Canadian apparel, it wouldn't shock the market as much. People wouldn't be as interested and it wouldn't stand out amongst the crowd, all right? So when you're thinking about your clothing brand idea, the first thing that I want, to, want you to think about is how much does my clothing brand idea actually shock the market and stir things up a bit and do something a little bit different. When we first came up with the idea for K-Bud, all that it was from the beginning was just those words K-Bud, and it's just because that was what was said, and it was just those two words, and we knew we had something because it stood out, it was very different, and it was nothing like any of the other Canadian brands that we see a lot in the marketplace. 
over the course of the first six months, for the first little bit, we thought that we were actually going to go after hockey players because we thought that that's something that hockey players say a lot, and so they'd probably want to buy it. And what we realized is that actually... KBud is actually this more of this rural Canada thing that I'm always talking about on this channel here. And that's just something that we figured out naturally as we were trying to sell and as we were trying to grow our brand. And likely the same thing will happen with you. You'll come out with an idea. Hopefully it's one that's really interesting and you just get this feeling that there's something to it. And then as you grow your brand, as you come out with your first bunch of t-shirts and you try to sell them, you start to realize what's working and what's not working and which market is responding compared to this market segment, right? And you start to understand which segments of the market are actually responding better to your clothing and you start to angle your brand concept towards that direction more. You start to chisel your brand idea and focus it and maneuver it in a way that grows as your company is growing, okay? So don't get sucked into this whole collective newbie mindset that the idea is everything and that's what's gonna take you to success. I remember I went through that when I first started up my first business and it completely flopped, okay? So what actually ends up working is coming up with an idea, trying it out and just constantly tweaking and learning from failures, learning from your successes and just constantly working it until you've created something that people are actually responding to. That's the right way to do it. That's the way that you never hear about it. You always hear about these success stories that took off overnight and that's just because people want to get the most for themselves while doing the least amount of work possible. We're all wired to feel that way and that's why those stories are the ones that are most popular but the majority of success stories that actually exist out there are entrepreneurs who realize that they're just going to try something and keep tweaking it until it's offering enough value that people are really responding to it and actually, you know, contributing back to you. Okay. So I'm not going to try and tell you that the business idea doesn't matter. Obviously you need to have a really good business idea, but what I'm saying is that your business idea is very fluid from the beginning and it can constantly be worked. And that's exactly what you should be doing when you first start up your clothing brand. Hope you like this video here. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I want to let you know about the closed Facebook group that we have going on for apparel success. There's a link in the description below. Follow that link. Join us in the group. We're a bunch of clothing brand owners all in there to support each other and answer each other's questions. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace. Lay back, get relaxed, and just lock in and soak up all this information. When new visitors come to your account, the first thing that they're going to do is read your bio to find out exactly who you are and what you do. Say you reach 20,000 followers on Instagram and you get some celebrities and influencers, then you'll reach a certain point where you can finally leverage that. Like some of these celebrities, it's just like, sure, bro, I'm down. Send me whatever you want. Thanks a lot. Like you can just tell that, you know, they don't really want to be formal about stuff like this. And I'm going to show you in the next upcoming modules the very strategic and systematic way that you can go about doing it. I'm really excited to show you. I'm gonna show you right now exactly what to do to implement this system for yourself and let's crack into it right now. What I'm doing here is I'm guiding you into the light. I'm gonna show you exactly how to grow up your account from the very beginning if you don't have anything to leverage. It just constantly keeps growing because as long as you're putting in the work, as long as the strategy's there, you will get results over time. You will get there if you put all this in place that I'm about to share with you, you will get there. I'm really excited for you to do this.